people you can trust is family. Hi, this is Luke Grimes, and I play Casey on Yellowstone. We're looking for a blue two-tone van going north on 540. When you're a little boy and you want to be an actor, what are, what are some things you want to play? A cowboy? A soldier? You know, it's just kind of all of the dream roles, you know, wrapped into one. And he's just an emotionally complex guy, but also kind of a badass. I mean, it's, it's, it's all the good stuff. Leave or I'm calling the police. I am the police. Now open the gate. You do realize, too, now that you've solidified yourself as one of America's hottest on-screen cowboys. Oh, God. What kind of reaction do you get in your everyday life? Uh, well, I live in Montana now, so I don't really see human beings anymore. I think there's more cows than people in my county. Uh, but when I do have to venture out, things have changed, you know, from, from like, say, season one to now. Uh, the airport's a little hairier. It's obvious it's, it's, it's got a far reach. Are you Casey to them, or are you Luke? Oh, Casey, all the way, which, uh, big shoes to fill, you know. <laughs> Everybody down! Let's take it back to the very beginning, the casting process for this show. What was that like? The moment I heard Taylor Sheridan, I was on board. I was like, I don't care what it is, let me in. <laughs> uh, then I read it, and I was, you know, Casey's, uh, out of everything I've ever read, uh, I can say hands down was my, my favorite part that I've ever uh, auditioned for. And I got a call from Taylor, probably three days later, saying, you got the job, now you gotta go, go get on a horse. <laughs> okay, so Cowboy Boot Camp, yes. tell me about this. Yeah, so, you know, obviously Taylor has to hire a bunch of kind of LA city slickers to play these cowboys. Yeah, so he sends us on a cowboy camp. It's basically a three day uh, uh, pack trip into the middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, we're kind of sleeping in tents, you know, resting our heads against our saddles. The, uh, a lot of things went wrong, which made it even more cowboy than it <laughs> was supposed to be. What went wrong? Uh, one of the mules kind of took a tumble and we lost a lot of our food uh, for one of the nights. So we had to find some. This is a real life Oregon trail over here. It was good though, you know, it, it, it not only built some camaraderie between, uh, you know, the cast, but uh, you know, we learned a few things. It's one thing to ride a horse around an arena and another to like, you know, jump over creeks and have your horse get spooked because of a snake and, you know, going through kind of some of the real life stuff. Looking at the new season and just watching yourself on a horse and seeing how far you've come, what's that like? You know, it's a, it's a kind of a skill set I never saw coming. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't really think horses would have been a part of my life. Once you get the bug, it's pretty special. And it took me a while. You know, I'll be honest, for the first couple seasons, I was still a little nervous getting on a horse. And now it's, I really look forward to it. And when this show is over, I'm gonna have to figure out getting some of my own because I'm gonna miss it. Shooting in Montana, let's talk a, a little bit about that. What would you say the, just that location lends to the story and how it inspires you guys? I think the location is probably the biggest character in the show. You know, I think it's why it's part of the the reason why the show's been such a success. You know, you, people want to be there. It's and I, obviously there's something to it. I moved there. Like I literally, you know, it would be I would go from LA to shoot and then go back home. And then at a certain point, I would go back to LA and like, why am I here? <laughs> I like it so much better where I just was. There's definitely like this romantic ideal to to the West. You know, just fighting for that dream of of the old American West. You want a can dream? Make a good neighbor. I think Taylor is uh, one of the best writers there is, and he's really writing in his sweet spot, which is, you know, he's a real cowboy. Hey, hey. Taylor is legitimately a cowboy, and, uh, you know, it's the perfect world for him, and he knows it like the back of his hand, and, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to, to be, you know, in that world. You save your allowance, one day you might get a horse like this but I doubt it. Taylor knows how it ends, and he's told me that. He's like, I know exactly how this ends. I get to be on this ride too, which is really fun. How would you describe season four? The beginning of season four is one of the most exciting things I, I have ever seen on TV. And then for Casey, the rest of season four is sort of a bit of a healing process. And I think season four for him is kind of a game changer where you, he really set some things up for him to be a different man in season five. 
So explain to us the healing process that Casey is going through and the significance of the wolf that keeps showing up for him. You know, it's funny, when we, that wolf kept showing up in season three and um, I've learned not to really ask questions when it comes to stuff like that because it's, it's more fun to, to experience things sort of the way the audience does, you know. I'm just going script to script and, and, and I kept being like, this wolf must mean something, you know. The wolf is our protector, your spirit animal. It's obviously some sort of uh, spirit uh, that's kind of, you know, calling to Casey and, and Mo recognizes that and basically tells him it's time to kind of go figure that out for himself. I'm not sure I believe in all this. i not sure believes in you. He goes on sort of a vision quest, which is definitely something, right? Like, I mean, credit to Taylor, you just, I didn't see it coming. I'm like, it's so not the show. It's just so something different. So it's, it's its own kind of journey. And I remember reading that and being like, wow, that is just, you know, you never know what he's gonna write next. How will you know when I'm done? How will you know, Casey? That is the question. Going into the ritual, he's sort of uh, doubting the process, right? Like he doesn't quite get what he's doing. So Casey doing the ritual outside, all alone in the cold. What was it like shooting that? When I read it, I was, you know, just so excited to kind of do the the emotional life of that scene. But what I didn't realize is that usually when uh, you do the Native American vision quest, which is a real thing that people do, you do it uh, naked. Uh, so it was an 18 degree day and Taylor didn't make me do it naked, but I had to, uh, I was basically in my underwear. Um, and it was one of those days where it was like raining and snowing at the same time. I mean, it just couldn't have been a more miserable day for, for weather for most of it. Uh, and yeah, and there I was for about 12 hours uh, in my underwear. Honestly, that's the toughest day of shooting of my whole career, hands down. I will say, you know, Gator, who plays the chef in the show, he's, he's actually our, our real craft services guy. So he, he really does make us all food and kind of take care of us. And uh, he made me a hot toddy and that, that changed my life. It was, it was the greatest beverage I've ever had in my life. How far into <laughs> shooting did you get the hot toddy? Uh, it, it, let's see, I, I showed up at six in the morning. I got the hot toddy around four. Okay. I mean, it was, but okay. it was perfection. It changed the whole game, yeah. So thanks, Gator. Morning. So season four explores this evolution of Casey and John's relationship as father and son. And it seems really solid. Mm -hmm. Talk us through that evolution. I think what's cool about the relationship is they've, they've kind of learned how to heal it without coming to any resolution. They still might disagree, but they've been able to move past that and just, uh, you know, learn how to work together through those sort of disagreements. Can't afford to do this. You know, we can't afford not to, son. Not anymore. I love that relationship. I, I've never seen a, a father and son relationship portrayed quite like it, you know, um, where you have these two men who are very strong-willed, hard-headed, who love each other and, and uh, are able to kind of show each other that without, you know, really giving too much away about how they feel about each other. You're a good man, Casey. Sometimes good men have to do real bad things. Now another relationship for Casey is obviously with Monica. This is it. Yeah, I think so too. Describe their relationship this season. It's just nonstop for them, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's a shit storm and uh, I think what's really cool about Casey and Monica is you, you can tell they're kind of twin souls, you know? They, they, they're meant to be together, they love each other and, uh, and nothing can get in between that and everything has tried, you know? I love you. This season, you you see a, a very distraught, sort of worn down Monica. Just she she just wants it to be over with the whole Dutton fiasco and, and all that, and just get back to the lives that they they might have had. And I think for Casey, he's kind of in between a rock and a hard place. You know, it's uh, he cares so deeply about Monica and Tate, but also he has this family legacy with the Duttons that you know he's loyal to. 
And so those two things really, uh, you know, cause some tension for them. And now the Duttons are expanding because in episode eight, Monica reveals she's pregnant. You're gonna be a brother. You having a baby? <laughs> what was your reaction when you saw that? Uh, that was cool. I'm, I'm like hoping that Kelsey gets to wear the big baby bump. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that'll be fun. And I'm sure, you know, obviously like Casey is thrilled. How cool, right? You know, that's that's his dream. I think his he's just he's a family guy. You know, he wants he wants his kids and his wife and his you know little piece of heaven in Montana somewhere. And I can definitely relate to that. You're happy, right? <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> One thing I love about Casey at the end of the day is, despite all the things that are trying to tear him in different directions, he's just such a good man. And we see that in his faith in his brother Jamie too. I just don't think Jamie could ever do it, Dad. I think it's like a, it's just a part of his character to try to do that with everyone. Um, I think he gives you the benefit of the doubt until the very last second. And then, well, then <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obvi obviously with Jamie, he's, he, he, he wants to see the good in everyone and especially his family, you know, and um, I love that relationship. I love you, brother. I love you. If you had to pick, what's your favorite scene from season four? That, that shootout in, in episode one was pretty damn fun to shoot, I'll be honest. That was, that was a, a hoot. Okay, so I have to ask, I'm very curious. Obviously you have a background that includes American Sniper, mm -hmm. which was directed by Clint Eastwood, who mm -hmm. obviously knows a thing or two about Westerns. Did any of those skills or anything picked up, lessons learned, did any of that translate into Yellowstone at all? Funny story about American Sniper. Uh, John Linson and Taylor Sheridan, our show creators, went to see that in the theater together. Mm. And Taylor was writing Yellowstone. And John called me and said, Bro, we love Sniper. Uh, Taylor's writing a part for this uh, young Navy SEAL cowboy guy. And that was like two years before I ever got the script. And I talked to Taylor on the first, for the first time on the phone right after he saw American Sniper. And he said, I think you'd be great for this Casey role. So that just random story, but funny that you asked about it. And I love that there was that full circle moment. It's funny the way the universe works, especially like being on Brothers and Sisters with Dave Annabelle, and then he was also in Yellowstone too. Like that's, do you, as an actor, is that normal for things like that serendipitous to happen? Or were you guys like, oh, this, this is cool. Hey, good to see you again. I guess, you know, Hollywood can be kind of a small world uh, in some ways. Um, if there was one person I would, you know, love for that to happen with, it would be Dave Annabelle <laughs> because he's freaking awesome. And we were all so sad to see him go after <laughs> episode one. Uh, but yeah, he was the life of the party. I mean, we had like a Save Dave campaign. We were like, can he come back as like a ghost, please, something. Well, speaking of brothers and sisters, that's also where E.T. first met you back in the day. And we have a clip oh to God. show you. Oh no. I started playing drums in church when I was like 13 or 14. and. I play drums in a band out here, but I also play the guitar and, you know, sing to myself. Um, that doesn't, <laughs> not for anyone else just yet. Shower, car, bedroom, uh, hallway. Whenever no one else is around, I'm singing. Better believe it. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. What's going, so... through, what's going through your mind seeing this? Oh my God, I, I, well, like who is that guy? It's you! <laughs> Wow. That's insane, wow. Are you proud of yourself? How far you've come? I mean, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my life, you know. I'm, I wake up every day, feel so lucky that I get to live where I live and be married to my wife and uh, yeah, so sure I'm proud of myself, yeah, why not? You mentioned the music and you're always playing music. Can we see Casey sing on Yellowstone? I think it'd be weird if Casey started singing. But you'll, you'll <laughs> I think it, here pretty soon you'll, you'll see Luke singing. Oh, 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 this yeah. is great. Yeah. Whose idea was that? That guy's. This guy's, this guy's? <laughs> you heard him, he told you. Your 24 year old <laughs> self. Yeah. Wow. Well, Luke, congratulations on everything. Thank and you. thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. On behalf of the fans, thank you for all you do in bringing the magic of Casey Dutton on our screens. Well, thanks for having me. It's been awesome.